Your website is the mousetrap. Your content is the cheese. Welcome to Content Matters with Barry Feldman and Andy Crestadina. Big content. As in content that most people won't create. The tough stuff. The big stuff. The stuff that matters. The stuff that makes a splash. And we're talking about books. And being an author and publishing a book. This is Barry and Andy with Content Matters. Yes. Uh, welcome, listeners. Let's talk about the idea of being an author and, I don't know, every every which way that you can claim to be an author or claim to be a uh, author to be uh, that uh, may or may not include uh, the hard work of doing a pub, uh, traditional book. But the idea is, you know, when, when, you left, when we left off last time, we were talking about domain authority. Mm-hmm. And domain authority is, is definitely an SEO play such that uh, you have a popular website. Yeah, mm-hmm. that uh, that you know, that the uh, search engines are recognized to be authoritative. But let's take a step back and talk about the traditional definition of domain. I looked it up. It says domain is a specified sphere of activity or knowledge. Mm-hmm. In the entrepreneurial space today, the personal branding space, you know, you want to stand out as an authority on your subject, which otherwise could be called your domain. And is there a better way to do that than writing a book? Andy, you wrote a book. You you just told me uh, before we went live that you're uh, updating it. It's mm-hmm. called Content Chemistry. Has it meant anything to your authority in your field? <laughs> it's almost unreasonable how much it makes a difference, how much it matters to be an author. And the instant credibility that comes from that. It's not as hard as you might think, and the value that you get from it is really outsized relative to the effort. Uh, Publishing a book and being an author instantly makes you far more credible in whatever domain you're in. Mm -hmm. Plus you get to sign them, right? Who the hell wants your autograph otherwise? (laughs) Yeah. And there are lots of, yeah, that, that's a value. There's definitely an ego boost, you know, that comes from being, <laughs> having a book and being an author. And, and you don't have to do it on a big scale to technically be an author. Of course, New York Times bestselling author is one of the strongest pieces of social proof you'll ever have, if, if you can work that one out. But we're talking now about just a reachable goal that anyone can do, and it matters. You can do it in a way, in a self-publishing way. Fun question. Barry, is it easier now? It's easier now, right? How easy is it to make a book? Once upon a time... There was nothing easy about it. I think uh, wannabe authors looked for uh, literary agents or they wrote 10-page proposals with chapters and so forth. And and so there was a process. I've attended a few sessions on this. I've read a lot of stuff about it because I published my first book uh, last November, and I did indeed self-publish it uh, with the help of uh, Amazon and their uh, printing option, which is called Create Space. And so if you go the traditional route, you got uh, you got a lot of hurdles to jump through. And so, yes, indeed, it is easier now because you can publish a piece of crap. Uh, hopefully, after listening to this uh, podcast, you won't. You know, that's probably not going to serve the cause. But yeah, as in you can uh, be a, you know, what, what would mm-hmm. you call a blogger, a journalist, a publisher? I mean, you, you, you know, the the the, level, the playing field leveler is the internet, and Amazon's a part of the equation, as mm-hmm. is other uh, self-publishing options. And so, yes, yeah, much easier to technically go from wannabe author to actual author. Now, mm-hmm. you want your book to be meaningful. You want people to buy it. You want people to ask you to speak about it. You want people to positively review it. So it's going to backfire to publish garbage. And so while it is easier to author a book now, it's not easier to write a book. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about quality, obviously. Don't don't go short on that. But I think that uh, if you are structured about it, it's more attainable than people think. And here's my process and what worked for me. And I first kind of wrote about the process and then I executed on the plan. The, what people are doing now is producing lots of content and publishing and blogging and hitting that, you know, publish button on their CMS. It's not that much harder to do it with a structure and a plan and a long-term goal so that you're blogging into a book. Here's how it works. The first thing you do is you create an outline of everything you know or everything that that you plan to include on this bigger topic, bigger than you'd normally publish. And that outline, some people call it like the um, like you're going to blog into your elbow, L-B-O-W, your lifetime body of work. You're going to produce on, during your career a lifetime body of work. Well, if you just create a structure for that and write an outline of how it all fits together, 
first. Now, as you blog, you can publish on each of these topics and gradually fill in all the blanks. That's what I did. I blogged for several years and I knew that I was gradually building it up and that it would have a structure. Then I just sat down over several months, just filled in all the gaps in between the things that I'd published and I have a draft. Two more steps and I'm done. One is send it to an editor. Next is send it to a designer. And you've got a print-ready PDF file. You're ready to self-publish your book. You produced it gradually over years. You did what everyone else did. You just had more structure and plan. You, you, you began with the end in mind, and now you can add author to your LinkedIn bio. That's a big difference. Yeah, I did that too, but I, I didn't do it. Uh, I did it accidentally, I, I must admit. I simply you know, created a big viral hit with SEO Simplified for Short Attention Spans, which was a post. And then I got a lot of encouragement to expand it, and I got a lot of offers to write about SEO, and a book kind of came together. And uh, you're a part of that book. When I, when I put all my posts together that uh, I, I, you know, would have been a part of the plan had it been preconceived. It added up to like 56, 50, 60 pages. And I said, well, that's, that's, that's not worth printing. You know, that's kind of a big ebook and a ridiculously small printed book. And then I embellished it with, uh, three pieces of contributed, uh, material, uh, including an interview with you. And, uh, I got permission to do stuff with, uh, Brian Dean and, and Jason Demers. So yeah, blog to a book or, you know, sort of reverse engineer your lifetime body of work and maybe look for the gaps and then certainly work on the transitions. Let's talk about other shortcuts with the idea in mind that mm-hmm. you, know, you want to sort of hack your way to authorship. Uh, some people say, you know, uh, if you fear, uh, the, you know, the blank screen, uh, the blank piece of paper, you should speak a book, you know, because they're better speakers than writers. So a lot mm-hmm. of people dictate books. Um, you mentioned getting help. You can get it uh, in the later stages with the editor, but you can certainly get it in the earlier stages, you know, like athletes do. They say, here's my mm-hmm. story, but I don't know how to write. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I mean, I, I, I have some in my back pocket and there, and then indeed there's some of my favorite books, but uh, do you have some book writing hacks in up your sleeve? Yeah, Barry, great question. I've got a good example for you. Drew Neister created a book called The CMO's Periodic Table, The Renegade's Guide to to Marketing. And the entire book is interviews. It's actually brilliant. It's very simple. The structure is perfect. It's easily browsable. You can kind of jump in wherever you want because each each, uh, interview has a different title. Uh, Things like email efficacy efficacy and uh, web experience. And they're all just different interviews with different CMOs. It is a beautifully packaged, uh, serious piece of work when you read through lots of insights. It's a, you know, 290 pages, but uh, it is a collection of interviews and uh, very well done, uh, high value, and well packaged. Yeah, that, that might be the best way. Uh, Silver Pop has a brilliant book I refer to often, uh, particularly when I'm sharing email marketing knowledge. Uh, it's about 150 pages, and it is about 10 interviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend John Naster, who's now part of the Rainmaker Copy Blogger team uh, with Hack the Entrepreneur, he he has a program called Hack the Entrepreneur. It joined the Rainmaker Network, and his book is uh, is is crowdsourced in that sort of way. It's he, I mean, he wrote it. He 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 put his fingers on the keys, but it's all based on the uh, his favorite interviews uh, from his podcast, and so. Mm-hmm. I uh, recently heard Brian Kramer speak his new book. I, I spoke to him about it, and he won't object to me saying this. It was a crowdsourced book. It's called Shareology. Mm-hmm. You know, sort of the media um, follows uh, the message follows the media here. It's it's shared. It was it was a project of him talking to social media experts. Sure, that, that, and it's a small world. Uh, when I met Drew, Drew, uh, it was through Brian. We were both at the same conference, and so uh, a lot of these people were mentioning actually know each other. Uh, and all, all authors and all benefit from that credibility, all have collaborated on this type of content. It's really no different than other content. It's just bigger. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's an example of what they call big content. Now, there, there's definite uh, investment there, not just time, but cost. Uh, the right way to do it is to use an editor and to uh, get some help and have someone have a second set of eyes on that. That's going to be worth a lot. And also, the book, if uh, some of our listeners have um, probably have a copy, Content Chemistry, my book, it's the illustrated handbook to content marketing. So uh, in that case, I knew I had to go a little bit bigger on, on the design. So uh, in that case, I had to, uh, there, was a, there was an investment there, plus mm. the paper. 
right? We're talking about, uh, there's a printed book here at the end. And there are actually lots of tools where you can uh, self-publish and do even a very small print run. Um, Barry, what's the name of that tool where, where you can upload your file and actually print just a handful of books? Create Space. Good one. So once you're on Create Space, there you can actually get just a couple of them in your hands and bring them with you. You've got a great lead behind. It's a fantastic sales support tool, uh, and this is a common tactic for publishing a book. It's a uh, in terms of sales, in terms of networking. It's sometimes called the twelve dollar business card. Yeah, I was going to say that you beat me to it. Uh, maybe ten dollar business card, but yeah, let's get back. I mean, th- th- those are a whole bunch of good hacks for making a uh, book authorship easier than you might imagine and I, and I think the idea of crowdsourcing it or making it a series of interviews might not just be a way to make it easier it might be a way to make it uh, better it's certainly a way to make it more promotional because you you know like a roundup post you have an army of people who's uh, have interest in the book but mm-hmm. uh, yeah you go to you go anywhere you know a local meetup or you know a web and Web and wine is it wine and web wine mm-hmm. and web mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep yep a, a big conference whatever and and you go here's my book which by the way is uh, the, how you and I know each other because you did that through the mail and it's uh, it's not just a business card it's a business card that says I'm an authority it is it's it's a it's a giant differentiator it's a it's a physical piece of thought leadership and it opens doors there are lots of writers who do nothing but review books. Uh, there are people whose specialty, there are podcasts that do nothing but talk to authors. Um, Douglas Burdett's marketing book podcast I'm thinking of, mm-hmm. or Roger Parker, who blogs about books constantly. He's a book reviewer and he's brilliant and it's fantastic stuff. These are places and doors that open and, and, and relevance that you have once mm-hmm. you put yourself into that context. Yeah, our friend Heidi, uh, Heidi Cohn, uh, and that's not strictly what she does, but she's made that a uh, part of ho- her, of her blog. And I imagine, uh, you know, it's it's treated in, in some ways as a press pass. Not not that she needs one because she's very well known, but she's mm-hmm. meet, she's meeting and networking with uh, authors and learning and and sharing, uh, you know, in the making of content because of her uh, ongoing book series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's um and there's a few examples where. It can actually uh, make a. I mean, you're, there's people potentially reading your book right now, like as you are, <laughs> whatever you're doing. If you're an author, if you publish something, or even have an ebook out there, uh, as you're listening to this, it's totally possible that someone is reading that right now. They have your voice in their head. Uh, my book, I'm honored by this. There's several universities that have uh, that require it. Really? Yep. And and how nice is that? I mean, there's, uh, it's not just uh, making a difference and helping marketers kind of get their feet wet and learn all these mm-hmm. tactics and tools. And but um, you'll get if you have a report on your book sales, you're going to see at the beginning of each semester, 100 books sold. And they've got a teacher literally assigning your book to their class because uh, you created something that was of that high value. Marketing class or chemistry class? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the first thing about chemistry, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a chemistry theme. Everything needs a theme, right? Content chemistry, the handbook for content marketing, nothing yeah. about chemistry in the book. Does it, I'm changing the subject here because maybe, uh, maybe we're losing listeners who don't want to write a book. Does it have to be a book? I say no. Great point. Right. What's a book? Should, tell us, Barry, jump into those, those formats, those close cousins. Uh, what, uh, what are we really talking about here? How what, books want me to package it? What other possible packages are there? Yeah, well, a book uh, typically has a cover, and in the old days, I guess it pre, you know it came out first with the hardcover, and then it went to paperback. But that's not the case anymore, and I don't even want to get into all all the you know publishing options there are. So many, and I've attended uh, so many sessions about the uh, you know the reasons to be an author and the shortcuts to becoming one, but. You know, you can author a course, you can author uh, a blog, I suppose, and most importantly, I think you can author an ebook. You know, and mm-hmm. so an ebook probably, I don't, I don't know, I, I guess I wouldn't call something 15 pages a book, but mm-hmm. I started writing things that were 30, 40, 50 pages, and I, I didn't say, uh, I didn't say this is a book you could buy on Amazon because you couldn't, even though that would have it easy, would have been easy to accomplish. I said I authored the plan. Mm-hmm. 
I authored 21 pointers to sharpen your website. Mm-hmm. Well, I did indeed do that. And that sounds really good. And I put it in my author bios and I put it in my emails. And so that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be a book and it might just be your stepping stone to creating a book. It might be a way to test a concept for a book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's a, hopefully you don't feel like it's too much of a stretch and don't do it if you're not comfortable with it, but that, that makes you an author and that unlocks that little part of that, uh, it's like achievement unlocked that unlock, you know, you can now add to that little part of your LinkedIn bio where you can put in publications. Mm-hmm. So, uh, these are things that add to credibility and you'll notice, of course, they talk about the speaker author circuit. If you're interested in getting in front of larger groups, which is basically networking on steroids, uh, the book is a really important step to doing that. So, uh, all the biggest speakers, you know, they take the time, they go through it, they think big, they plan, they, they, they put in the time and make the investment. And before you know it, they're coming out with another one. Uh, speaker and author go together for good reason. Yeah, yeah. I think the outreach strategies, uh, being an author of any of the above that we've discussed, include speaking. Uh, I belong to a meetup in the Sacramento area that once was uh, about being a nonfiction author and it sort of evolved to becoming being about a speaker and those are usually you know one and the same there's very few people that uh you know that are authors Mm -hmm. that aren't aren't speakers and there are very few speakers that aren't authors or or they're not going to become one so that's a great way to uh if you're an author to uh get speaking gigs or to Mm -hmm. get in get interviews and and vice versa if you're a speaker it's a great back of the room thing you're going to meet people you're going to get make a few bucks you're going to shake hands and you're going to open doors and uh certainly i guess we've discussed this but certainly it's a you know we've we have a show dedicated to guest blogging. It's a very smart and practical thing to do uh, as a guest blogger to mention your book. And it's going to sort of uh, be self-serving and proliferate because like in my case, my book is called SEO Simplified for Short Attention Span. So people mm-hmm. are looking me up uh, as the expert in SEO. <laughs> yeah. And, and speaking of SEO and the relationship between being an author and SEO, in my search console report, when I look at links to my website, uh, I see that, that the book page is one of the most popular pages that are linked to from other sites, probably because it gets mentioned, probably because it's in a lot of author bios, but there's definitely an SEO benefit as in a domain authority benefit from being an authority in your small d domain. So there are all kinds of ways in which there, uh, that this can give you a boost online, offline, and in online, not just in you know, social media, guest blogging, networking, but even search, even search. If I recommend, if you make that, make sure that that book page is on your website with the sales site, the, with the sales pages, the, the pages that convert visitors. A lot of people make a separate book website. You don't get as much of an SEO benefit if you're building a separate book website. Probably more of a benefit if that book page or book section is on your own site, the main site, the site that converts visitors into leads or customers. Yeah, or both maybe. I don't know. I think that it might be an arrangement with publishers. But if you're self-published, uh, I think your book is a section on your website, like you just said. Yeah, and speaking of uh, of uh, book websites, book web pages, uh, is it time yet? We got to move into it. Ch cheese. Strike up the cheese music. All right, we do this thing you guys know called uh, Mousetraps and Cheese and Cheese is content. So uh, I'm going to give you a tip here, and it relates to the topic that we're speaking about and how that applies to your content. Now, those are sort of inextricably tied this time. But uh, the idea that I have to share with you this week is that if you do uh, sort of tiptoe your way into a book uh, in the many of the ways we've discussed, like creating an ebook or doing an interview series or even capturing, we didn't discuss this, even capturing uh, podcast transcripts and turning that into a book, mm-hmm. uh, have the, you know, now, now we're getting into analytics and you just mentioned uh, that you've uh, measured and noticed that it has SEO benefits. Have the results of the things you're doing that fall under, you know, the, a banner of authorship inform your future content, right? So if you uh, did a book or you're, you're blogging a book a lot, you know, check out how people are responding to it. Are they reading it? Are they sharing it? Is there dwell time on those pages? Could it be more things? Should it be more things? Should a chapter of your book become another book? Should it become mm. an interview series? Should 
you uh, start doing an audio book specific to the to your book or one of your books or sections of your book. So a book is, you know, a, like you said at the top of the show, Andy, a big piece of content and responsible, practical, data-driven uh, content marketers allow analytics to inform what they do next. So use your book as a sort of a test bed for content topics. Mm, I love that. Well, my turn with the mousetrap tip. Uh, the mousetrap tips are always about websites and conversions. So here's one. You shouldn't expect people to convert unless you get them some evidence of legitimacy, unless you leverage the conformity bias, as in the bandwagon effect or herd behavior. You want people to do what you see other people are doing. So add some testimonial-type content to your pages. This goes for a book page. also goes for a speaker's page or anything. One of the best sources for those nuggets of uh, happy feedback is social media. So if you ever see a tweet or a post of someone saying, loved that, thank you, it was great, very appreciative, there's really just a few clicks to take that tweet or Facebook or post and embed it into your book page. It's in context. It's a tweet itself. Like you can see it. You can even interact with it. The person, you can follow the person right from there. But I think it's those three dots under in, in Twitter. If you just click that and you can then there's a little drop-down menu. You choose embed tweet, copy the code, put it into the page. You need to add social proof to these pages. Mine social media for social proof. Actually, this isn't specific to books and speakers pages. This is for everything. You can always find great stuff. You know, there's happy people casually putting positive reviews into social streams. Uh, not such a big stretch to actually embed that in context right from that social stream, put it where it's more powerful, right next to... Uh, the, the you know right in the marketing itself uh, that's a great mousetrap tip very easy to do and a, and uh, if you don't do it probably a big missed opportunity yeah i put tweets on my landing pages and uh, my landing pages convert to like 75 percent he says as he pounds his chest but yeah social <laughs> <laughs> social proof is everything okay so folks content matters you're listening hopefully not for the first time i think our program content matters uh, matters to you, right? So let's spread the love. One thing that uh, it takes to do that is uh, reviews, speaking of social proof. And uh, though iTunes has become this scary beast, I don't know. I, I have opinions. Uh, I have conversations about mm -hmm. iTunes now and then and all the uh, things that they've done to it that make it a little le less user-friendly. Uh, if you, if, uh, if you want to spread the love on <laughs> – that's funny. I'm wearing my Content Jam shirt that says – T-shirt that says mm -hmm. spread the love. If you want to spread the love on this program, you could do it a huge favor by reviewing it on iTunes or any of the places that you access it. And uh, and speaking of uh, uh, spreading the love and, and, and speaking of word of mouth, word of mouth is the other way. It makes a huge difference. If you like this show, we'd be super grateful if you just mention it to a friend. Right on, right on. All right. So we'll come back in a couple of weeks and do another episode of Content Matters. And in that episode, we are going to be focusing on the ingredients of great written copy. Another great topic. Looking forward to it, Barry. It's going to take a little time. All right, Andy. Talk to you soon. Audience, talk to you soon. Thank you so much in advance for uh, sharing the love of Content Matters. The podcaster has left the building. <laughs>